Hey y'all, this video is an introduction to SSI, Supplemental Security Income. First, I'm gonna talk about the difference between SSI and SSDI, Social Security Disability Insurance. Then I'm gonna go over who's eligible for SSI, how your benefit amount is determined, how to apply, and how to appeal if your claim is denied. SSI is a federal program run by the Social Security Administration, the SSA. It provides benefits to people with limited income and resources who are 65 or older, blind or disabled. Children who are blind or disabled can also get SSI, but in this video, I'm only going to talk about adults. It's easy to confuse SSI with SSDI. Both are disability programs run by the Social Security Administration, but they're different. SSI is based on financial need. It doesn't matter how much you've worked in the past. In contrast, SSDI is for people who have worked long enough and paid enough in payroll taxes to get benefits. Some people will qualify for one program, but not the other but other people may qualify for both. I have another video on SSDI if you want to learn more about it. The main requirements for SSI are that you must be 65 or older, blind or disabled, and you must have limited income and limited resources. Let's talk about what disabled means for an adult. To be disabled requires two things. First, you must have a medical condition that prevents you from engaging in substantial gainful activity. In other words, you can't earn a sufficient amount of money by working. And second, your medical condition must be expected to last for at least one year or result in death. There are special rules for people who are blind, but for everyone else, the SSA uses a five-step process to determine if someone is disabled. First, your monthly earnings must be below a certain limit. This limit is updated every year. In 2021, the limit for someone who isn't blind is $1,310 per month. I'll include a link below to a page with more information about the earnings limit. Second, your condition must be severe. It must significantly limit your ability to do basic work activities like lifting, standing, walking, sitting, or remembering for at least one year. Third, your condition must be in the SSA's listing of impairments, also called the Blue Book. I'll include a link below to it. If your condition is listed, you're disabled and you don't need to continue to steps four and five. If your condition is not listed, you can still prove you're disabled by passing steps four and five. Step four requires that your condition interfere with your ability to do your previous work. If not, then you're not disabled and you can't get SSI. If yes, then you can continue to step five. For step five, your condition must prevent you from doing other work. The SSA will consider things like your medical condition, age, education, work experience, and skills. If you can do other work, then you're not disabled. If you can't do other work, then you are disabled. In addition to being 65 or older, blind or disabled, you must have limited income. The SSA only counts certain types of income when determining your eligibility. Countable income generally includes money you get from work, investments, other benefit programs, and from friends and relatives. It can also include any free or discounted food and housing you get, and your spouse's income if you live with them. Generally, the more countable income you have, the lower your benefits will be. And if your countable income is higher than the maximum federal benefit rate, you can't get SSI. The maximum federal benefit rate for 2021 is $794 per month for individuals and $1,191 for couples. But remember, not all of your income is counted. So it's possible to earn more than $794 per month and still qualify for SSI. 
This is pretty complicated, so if you think you might qualify, I recommend applying, and the SSA will help you figure it out. To get benefits, you must also have limited resources. Resources are things that you own that you could sell to pay for food and shelter. This includes savings, stocks, bonds, land, life insurance, and certain personal property. The resource limit in 2021 is $2,000 for an individual and $3,000 for a couple. However, there are lots of resources that the SSA does not count towards this limit, including the home you live in and the land it's on, household goods and personal effects, and one vehicle you use for transportation. Like with income, counting your resources can be complicated. So if you think you might qualify, I recommend applying and the SSA will help you figure it out. If you qualify and start receiving benefits, the SSA will periodically check to make sure you still meet the requirements. If you're collecting benefits based on a disability, the SSA will have what are called Continuing Disability Reviews, or CDRs, to check if you're still disabled. As part of these reviews, you may have to submit new medical records or other information. The SSA will also periodically review your income, resources, and living arrangement to make sure that you still meet the non-medical requirements for SSI. If you qualify for SSI, your benefit amount will vary depending on a lot of things. There's a maximum benefit amount set by the federal government that's updated every year. The federal maximum for 2021 is $794 per month for individuals and $1,191 for couples. But many states, including California, add on to this amount, making the possible maximum benefit higher. The more countable income you have, the lower your benefit will be. Your benefit amount will also vary depending on whether you live on your own, in someone else's household, or in an institution like a nursing home. You can apply for SSI online, by phone, or by making an in-person appointment. I'll include a link below to the documents you need when applying. If you need a language interpreter, the SSA will provide one for free. You should apply for SSI as soon as possible because the SSA will not pay you benefits for any time before your application. The SSA usually takes between three and five months to process an application. A local office will first help you complete your application and make sure you meet the basic non-medical requirements. Your application will then go to a state office to determine whether you are disabled. If you don't have sufficient medical documentation, the SSA will pay for a medical exam. It's very important you go to this exam if needed because if you don't, the SSA may deny your claim. If you qualify for SSI, you'll also probably qualify for Medicaid to pay for medical care and prescriptions. You'll also likely qualify for SNAP to help you purchase food. In some states, the SSI application is also an application for Medicaid and SNAP. If the SSA denies your claim, they'll send you a letter that explains why and tells you how to appeal. There are four different levels of appeal. First, you can appeal by filing a request for reconsideration within 60 days. The SSA will then take a fresh look at your case and any additional documents you provide. If your claim is still denied after the request for reconsideration, you can file a request for hearing within 60 days. The SSA will then schedule a hearing with an administrative law judge. If you get to this point, you should really consider hiring an attorney to represent you. At the hearing, the judge will question you and any witnesses you bring. You or your attorney can also question the witnesses. The judge may want you to have more medical exams or tests, which the SSA will pay for. The judge will then make a decision and mail it to you. If you lose at the hearing, you can appeal within 60 days to the Social Security Appeals Council and then again to federal court. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Good luck to you.